Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture with ISO IEC 1725-2017 edition and now resources requirements First point, general requirements Lab shall have personal, equipment, systems and support services External provided services to manage lab activities And personal, and that will be our lecture for today Lab personnel shall act impartially, that's explained in details in general requirements, impartiality. Be content and work in accordance to lab management system. Be content enough to perform their lab activities and they can get a valid results with an acceptable range. So, to ensure their competency, all competence requirements for personnel shall be documented in a personal file for each person, including his education, training, evaluation, and uh, technical knowledge, skills, and experience of that person. Lab shall ensure that the personnel have the competence to perform their lab activities in accordance to international guidelines and they can also evaluate the significance of deviation. If they will apply any devi deviation to the method, they will be able to ensure that this deviation will not affect the accuracy of method but it will improve the accuracy of the method. So the lab shall ensure the competence for personnel inside the lab, especially who operate scientific equipment, uh, perform testing and calibration, evaluate results, develop and validate new methods, scientist reports, because that can affect the integrity of results. So the lab management shall not give any duties or responsibilities for personnel inside the lab before ensuring their competency. And how can you ensure the competency for each person inside the lab? Technically, for each unit will provide the new analyst after training with the CRM with non concentration for each parameter or, or blind sample. And the result for this test will be recorded in a competency test form that will be prepared competency test form. And if the results were within the acceptable range, so the technical lead can authorize him to perform the lab activity and this test competency test that will be for each person every year one time per year lab management shall communicate to the personnel their duties responsibilities and authorities and that will be in the job description form uh, as we discussed before in the structural requirements the lab shall have procedures and retain records for if they said shall have procedure so you have to prepare a procedure for this so it will be only one procedure determining the contents requirement what do you want for each position inside the lab you shall define what are the requirements for each position based on their education qualification technical knowledge skills and experience as example if you will hire new technical lead new technical manager in this case you can add that requirement for this uh, job 15 years experience phd and uh, who can develop and validate methods for the lab who can evaluate results who can train the staff in all methods and instruments and you can uh, define what are the instruments you have so whatever description for the job and requirement for this job you can define this in the, in that procedure determining the contents requirement for each position inside the lab and also selection of personnel will be based on their contents and their education and also requirement of the lab and training of personnel technical lead for each unit will determine the training requirements for his staff for new and old staff based on their qualification and their competency and he will send these requirements in a training requirements form to the training officer. So till now we have competency test form, job description form and also training needs or training requirements form. Then the training officer, officer will resend this form to the lab head to approve that based on the lab fund or lab budget because sometimes the lab may not have enough fund for all training. In this case, the lab manager will assign a specific person to provide some of these trainings to the person and that will be internal training. 
all training certificates for each person inside the lab shall be recorded also in his personal file and after training of personnel you shall supervise them supervision of personnel to ensure that they can perform their lab activities and they can get a valid results and after supervision of personnel and you ensure their performance you can authorize the technical lead also can authorize them to perform the lab activity and after authorization of personnel you shall not let them and go you shall monitor their competency and that will be in the competency test form every year and I will prepare at the end of this lecture also in implementation a general procedure for personnel. Last requirement, lab shall, shall authorize personnel to perform specific lab activities such as development, validation of methods, analysis of results, and also report, review, and authorize of test results. The many changes compared to the previous edition in 2005 edition 523 lab shall use personnel who are employed or under contract to the lab and that point has been removed in 2017 edition and 524 maintenance of current job description and also this point has been removed but still as I, as explained before that is still, is still you can use job description form or you can find another way and in 2017 edition the need to assist Training also erased but still you will prepare a procedure for training of personnel and you can add assessment of training also to this procedure there is a need also to supervise personnel so the lab need to prepare for personnel first procedure to identify the qualification and the training needs for lab personnel organization chart and that's explained before in details including the top management or the responsible authority of the lab uh, lab head technical lead quality lead uh, training officer quality of all of them job description form explained before competency test form also explained before and training needs form and I prepared a procedure for personal requirement. You can adapt this procedure to be suitable for your lab. The purpose of this procedure to identify the qualification and training needs for the lab personnel and also to evaluate the competency of them. Scope, it will be applied to lab personnel who are working in a place affecting the lab activities and lab results. And in the procedure, first point, hiring new staff. You can explain what is the process to hire the new staff inside the lab and that will be based on their qualification so their education certificates training certificates skills and experience shall be evaluated by technical lead or quality lead if the lab personnel will be directed to the lab units so technical lead will evaluate him but if he will be in the quality team it will be she, he will be evaluated by the quality lead and also the lab head and after that new staff will be directed to any unit based on the lab needs and also his qualification and then training for the analyst shall be done by the senior analyst of the respective unit and after training his competency shall be evaluated technically shall ensure his competency and that will be by giving him a blind sample with a known concentration of target analytes or certified reference material containing also the target analytes before giving him any duty and results for this test or this evaluation shall be recorded in a competency test form and to give him duties also these results shall be within the acceptable range and also every person inside the lab shall have a personal file including his education certificates training certificates and also any other certificate related to his experience second point in this procedure training for lab personnel or training plan how can you prepare training plan for lab personnel inside the lab technical lead for each unit will send the training needs of his staff as i explained before to the training officer who will resend resend that request to the lab head to approve because sometimes the lab has not enough fund to provide all of this training so in this case the lab head can assign a specific person to provide internal training to the lab personnel 
third point training evaluation and I found this point is not important for the lab because you evaluate the competency for every person inside the lab every year by analysis of certified reference material or proficiency test sample so there is no need to evaluate the personal after each training if you will make that it will be based on the type of training and after training evaluation and after all of these mentioned points you will supervise the personal after evaluation of his competency and also authorization of personnel after you ensure that he is competent enough to perform the lab activity that was the end of our lecture for today thank you and see you in the next lecture inshallah